Hello everybody, I wanted to do a video about protecting yourself from tear gas. I've sort of talked about this in other videos, but it's one of the ones I think a lot more people are interested in than for chemical warfare. Because as I've said to people before, I think one of the most practical uses of owning a gas mask as a civilian, or any sort of respirator, is actually protection from tear gas, because I think that's the most likely thing you are to encounter. Now tear gas is typically CS gas, there is a couple of other types of gas that can be used as tear gas, but it's typically CS. And despite its name, CS gas isn't normally a gas, it's a particulate, which means it's like a powder. Um, so if you get a drum of CS, it's like a, you know, a big barrel of powder, and then from that powder you would turn it either into a gas by dissolving it in something like methylene chloride, or you would um, burn it to release a smoke from it. Now both of those things can be stopped by masks quite easily and I'm going to go into that now. So you have a kind of few options here. So I'm not going to go over every option but I'm going to go over the most practical ones I can think of um, and also give you some more information on sort of CS as an agent and what you want to avoid of it. So any sort of military respirator uh, I ideally would recommend a full face respirator, but I'll go into other options in a minute, because it protects your eyes. Now, CS is a bit like um, pepper spray, sort of a bear spray kind of thing, where it primarily, you know, can burn your throat, um, cause swelling in the throat, sort of dry throat, sneezing, sort of snot, everything like that. But obviously it will do damage to your eyes, if it gets into your eyes, it will cause you to want to close your eyes from the, you know, strength of it. Your eyes will water, your eyes will burn. It'd be like getting, you know, like chili or something in your eyes. So, ideally, a mask with eye lenses is what you want, a full face military respirator. Now, this is something that I can't find much information on, so I'm going to try and give it you as honestly as possible in this video. For the most part, CS being a particulate, a powder, you can block it with a particulate filter. Particulate filters are very cheap because they're also used, as well as an army filter, they are used for, um, you know, like DIY type stuff. So this is a P3 rating filter. I would always advise if you get a particulate filter to go for a P3 rating one. Because a P3 filter, it should say somewhere on there. Think about there. P3 means it blocks pretty much everything that's a particulate, even the very, very fine powders, where if you had a P1 particulate filter, it wouldn't, you know, do as much of that. Um, this haversack I got, by the way, was really cheap on Amazon. It's like a modern one. Just sort of thrown out there, it's quite useful for carrying a mask in. Here's my Avon CT12. It's got a particulate filter on it. Obviously, you put the mask on. Get up ever so slightly and you're good to go. You've got your mask on. Nothing can get in your eyes. And of course, nothing can get in. You're completely immune to tear gas, CS gas. One thing I do need to mention, though, is I would recommend wearing a boiler suit, um, whatever you want to call it, sort of overalls, siren suit, one of those kind of things. You know, something like if you were spray painting you'd want on, because although CS gas primarily attacks the eyes and the respiratory tract, it doesn't, isn't nice to get on your skin. For some people, especially if they have sensitive skin, it can really burn or cause, like, skin irritation, things like that. So I'd recommend you wear like waterproof raincoats or this stuff. This isn't waterproof, but it should at least keep it off your skin until it, unless there's so much in the air that it becomes soaked into the suit. At that point, you could rip it off and throw it off and still be wearing your clothes underneath. So I'd say your best option, as said, is a full face mask. Now, this is where, as I was saying, I can't find that much information on it. Because particulate filters block particulates and they block CS as a normal agent, um, what I don't know is if it is dissolved in methylene chloride to make it into a vapour, if this would actually stop it. Because I imagine even if it somehow still blocks the particulates, the methylene chloride will get through the mask, and you don't want to be inhaling that either, to be honest. So that's why I'd say maybe you want a full NBC filter on, because depending on how they you know, distribute the CS gas, if it's burning, I think this would protect you absolutely fine. However, if it's you being used in a non-pyrotechnic way, being sprayed as a gas, as a vapour, I would not want to be using a particulate filter only. I would recommend a full-on NBC filter. It doesn't even have to be a full-on NBC filter. What you want is a particulate filter combined with a filter to protect against vapours. Now, the reason that's quite easy to do, here I have a 3M4251 half-face mask. I actually use this um, as part of my volunteering. 
Um, now, 4251, that protects. The brown is in part of the ABEC stuff. The brown means vapour, the white means particulate. And while this is only a particulate 2 rating, that should still be good enough for tear gas. Um, but, like I was saying, P3 is ideal. So it's A1 protection, so that's the A from the ABEC, which is vapours. Um, so it's only one. I've, ideally, A3, P3 is what you want for maximum protection, but depends on your budget and what you can find. Now, if you are using a half face mask, I'll just get out to show you. If you are using a half face mask like this, um, you obviously have to be aware it won't protect your eyes, so I'd recommend swimming goggles or something like that to cover your eyes, because otherwise the tear gas is still going to get into your eyes. Now, you can see on the band around there, it's brown and white. That means it's just showing you it's the A and the P protection. I think it even says on there somewhere. Yeah, A1, P2, which probably is hard to see on the camera, is actually on there. So, as I said, something like this is ideal. These are quite comfortable. Now, the reason I'd also recommend these is if you live in a country where the police or, like, the government is, you know, a bit like a dictatorship, because the same is because especially Venezuela at the moment, people have been asking me from Venezuela and other countries what they can get to protect themselves from their own sort of government. I, masks like this are ideal if you can get goggles of them. Because in most of these countries, I can imagine you can still buy, like, spray painting gear and, you know, like, hardware gear, even if they block the sale of military masks. So what you do is you get a civilian mask like this. You put this on. You do your... Okay. Yeah, do your fit check. Obviously, there's an additional strap around here that you do up. This is very comfortable and lightweight. You can wear glasses with this, which is an advantage for people like me, where you can't wear glasses with full face masks. You do your pressure check. Yep, the mask is pressurised. Then what you want to do is get swimming goggles or something airtight to put on your eyes to protect your eyes while you're wearing this. So, as I was saying, the good news is that most half face masks or even reusable spray painting masks always have a particulate and a vapour protection because if you're doing spray painting and you know stuff removing all that makes dust that the masks are designed for people that do that's the basic level of protection they want so what you've probably got in here is I imagine activated charcoal as well as the particulate protection or rather than activated charcoal it's got some sort of particulate later layer that absorbs the vapour you know and that gets wet rather than you inhaling it so there you go you've got the option of either a full face mask or a particulate respirator. Um, obviously, as I said, this is much more preferable with an NBC filter on or just uh, a sort of A3, P3 filter if you can find it. Or one of these with goggles or a full face industrial mask with spray painters with goggles. You can get them around. That should give you full on protection from CS agents. As I said, it is nasty stuff. This information is here to protect you. Hopefully you get good use out of this if you need to. Uh, as I said, full face masks are preferable because it does everything at once. You can change the filters. Another reason I would advise against using um, cheek filter masks, the big military cheek filter masks like the USM-17, Czech M10, Russian, PBF, all those sort of things, is because simply once the filters become clogged with particulates, you can't take the mask off you know, without exposing yourself to change the filters, and it's not an easy task to change the filters. Masks like this, you can just unscrew them or not. Masks like this, you can throw it away, you know, easily if it becomes saturated. With a full face mask, if the particulate filter gets, you know, too clogged, and you can't easily take the mask off or change the filter, you could suffocate because the particulate layer sticking to the front of the filter would be like somebody covering your filter intake. So bear that in mind, get spare filters if you can. But if you are in a country where you can't get access to proper gas masks and filters, look for A3, P3 spray paint masks. Ideally, if you can only get A1, P1, that's better than nothing. But ideally an A3, P3 rated um, little spray painting thing and there are goggles with it. So hopefully this has helped you if you are thinking about how to protect yourself from tear gas.